How's it going everybody? Welcome to another video. So today, bug. So today, or I guess in this video, because this video is probably going to take a day or two, um, we are stop procrastinating and we are going to rip the blazer apart. So we are going to try to get everything off of this. I'm going to leave the hood on kind of for a little while, just kind of keep the motor covered, but fenders, grill, radiator, everything off of this is what we're going to try to get off in the next day or two. I want to have it stripped down to basically maybe the hood, the motor, and the frame. All the front of this has got to come off. Now I haven't taken a blazer or an S10 down to the frame like this in a long time so don't really remember exactly what I need to do. It's going to be a lot of unbolting and all that stuff. I have bags and a sharpie to put everything in because this is going to be, you know, a lot of bolts. Let's go ahead and pop the hood. Of course, the hood's stuck on this thing. It's all right, ain't no big deal. There we go. And, I mean, I know that, you know, there's bolts here, all that stuff. The inner fender wells are bolted to it. So it's basically just unbolting a lot of stuff. And I mean, then once we get into it, you know, all of this stuff needs to come out too. So I guess, really? Let's just start our, start unbolting. I mean, we got to get all of these out too. This is gonna be fun. <coughs> and like I did in the, I don't know, one of the previous videos, got the back cleaned on the patio back there, so that way I have plenty of room to start putting front end pieces man it's a lot of work i mean also you gotta think this is a 1983 half of these bolts have probably never been off this truck but i got the whole front end taken off so far bumper grill all that kind of stuff <clears throat> i've gotten a lot of bolts off the fenders so they are loose. Um, the one that's bolted, the fender that's bolted into the inner frame, that's off. I think there's bolts that hold the inner fender in, because I'm just trying to remove the inner fender and the fender all at the same time. What other ones? Are there ones in the door? Yeah, so there's... One right there. Well, that one's gone. So there's only one right there. We're getting close. I've got... Got about an hour left to work on this. Just not before it gets dark, just before I got a, other things to do. So I guess we'll just get back to work. Um, See what I can get done. Okay. So I worked on it for another 10, 15 minutes, whatever. And I think the fender, this fender is ready to come off. I just wiggled it and it wiggled a lot. So let's see if I can. So see if I can set this camera up right there. I think I've got an electrical wire to my windshield washer tank but I think that's the only thing that uh, this get the overflow hose off and I had to disconnect the hood off of the fender because the hood is connected Well, 
it's gonna come off. Just give me one second. Where's my good? It is. This should be this fender. Well, there it is. One fender off. And of course, like, we're gonna, okay, so, <clears throat> in a minute, we're just gonna call this video, well, we're not gonna call this video a day, but I'm gonna call it a day and then we'll pick it up on another day. So the electrical wiring for the chassis, we're gonna keep, cause that's the headlights and stuff like that. But I'm gonna wind up redoing some some of that because um that's duct tape but anything that's electrical for the motor is coming out the only thing that on this motor that i need is two wires the main power that goes to the starter and the trigger from the electrical from the ignition switch that goes to the starter those are the only two wires i need everything else can go so all this is gonna go all that well so far, so good. All right, well, I'm gonna take a break. Basically, be a day. But I got this fender off. Now let's just get the other one off, which now that I remember how to get this one off, the other one should be no issue. So we'll catch you on another day. Well, it's been raining for the last two days. I guess this is a um, remnants of a storm or something like that. I don't know. Um, I know last night it knocked out my freaking wi-fi but which sucks because my wi-fi comes from that green box right there yeah. <laughs> gopro that could be in the rain but i mean my backyard floods and i mean this is what eight feet away from my fence and i mean it's underwater and i mean that's my wi-fi right there that's where, or well, I guess that's where my internet comes in. I mean, it's underwater. And I mean, it's bad. Well, today, while I was at work, evidently, we had a, God, I'm freaking up soaked. I mean, we had a flash flood. It is bad everywhere. <sighs> my socks are wet. Um, yeah. We had a flash flood. So, and it came, I mean, you can see my yard, even right there. I mean, this is, but, I mean, you can see the, de the debris line in my yard. And this is from here to the street is a good, like, seven, eight feet. And here's the bad thing. This is why I'm outside. Look at my truck. So needless to say, I mean here, you can see the, the line. I mean, look at the dirt line. That's, you know, 18 inches deep. That's, that's freaking wonderful. So let's see, hopefully there's no water inside my truck. Yeah, there was. Well, that's wonderful. But when <laughs> the line <laughs> is above the door, yeah, that sucks. Shit. Well, yeah. 
because my truck was under 18 inches of water today. It's wonderful. Yeah, this side it didn't get up as high, but it's still. So this side should be dry. Yeah. Oh. Well, lucky that this isn't like, you know, I'm planning on stripping the whole interior out of it anyways. But I mean, you can see, look at my yard, how far this stuff up it is up. But like I say, I'm planning on stripping the whole interior out of the truck anyways, but now I really need to because that water's in there and I don't want it to mold and mildew and get nasty. So needless to say, when this rain stops, we're gonna have to tear that truck apart and try to dry it out because freaking flood would have known that I would have put the damn truck in the yard or at least in the driveway oh well things happen but since it's gonna rain for the next couple days um we're probably not gonna be able to work on the blazer no more so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and start working on rain raindrops off the thing we're gonna go ahead and work on um the small block Chevy for the Silverado. We've got a couple things that I want to do that. I got some parts in for it. So we're going to go ahead, head on the inside, and start working on the small block Chevy. Well, since it's nasty outside, I said we're going to work on this. So that's what we're doing. First thing we're going to do is we need to get off the, like, I guess it's a slight windage tray on the bottom of this. We get that off. And we need to get, I'm not going to worry too much about the, oh, damn, that's on tight. I'm not going to worry too much about changing the oil pump out right now. Everything's a hammer. <clears throat> I've got a new oil pump. We're going to take it off and then I will put the new one on later because you got to set it up right. Um, and I always, like, the oil filter, plug, you know, this, yeah, it's an oil filter. I guess, uh, oil pickup, whatever. It's always at a, it's got to be at a certain height from the oil pan bottom. Well, they're press fit. I always like to tack weld it on there so I know that it does not move. Yeah, that's nasty. Um, so I will do the oil pump later. Do the correct measurement so it's, you know, just slightly off the floor of the oil pan. And tack weld it on. So I'll do that later. Reuse the shaft. There's a new um, adapter that's with the oil pump, and then this just pulls out. So we'll do that later, another time. I'm not gonna stress on this. We'll just throw that down the oil pan. So right now, I want to mainly just get the um, the bearings switched out. I mean, it's, this isn't hard. I mean, just make sure you put it back together with plenty of assembly lube. And I've got it rotated so that way this one, these two are up so I can redo these and then just work my way down. We're gonna do one at a time. 
but I'm just going to go ahead and loosen both of these since they're there. All right. Now let's see how the bearings look. Hopefully they look fine. You can see wear on them. But I mean, come on. This motor has two, just over 200,000 miles on it. So take these off. And then we will, let's see, set that to the side. We'll push the piston down just a hair. So that way I can get to the bearing on this one, pull it out, and then put the new one in. Oh yeah, got plenty of room. We need to just spin it a little bit. I mean, there it is. And voila. Same thing. I mean, shows a little bit of wear, but nothing major. And we have all new, brand new ones from Summit Racing. And these things are all the same, so it doesn't matter like which one goes where, you know, all that kind of stuff. All you gotta do is make sure when you put these together that it has this little indent right there and the bearing has it. So you need to make sure that that little indent goes right in there. And that's it. Same thing with this. And there it is, brand new bearing put in. Now, always put a plenty of assembly lube on there. This stuff is so sticky. this on and it's done. Oh, put assembly loom on it first. Duh. Just said, talked about that. Come on. Now get it stuck. put it on. Put the nuts on, torque them down, and it's done. Alright, where did it go? Fell down here somewhere. Ugh. I lost it. Now these get torqued to 45 foot-pounds, and that's it. Alright, 
Now, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven more to go. And then that will be done. So that's gonna take a while. So I'll get back to you when they're all done. <clears throat> okay, all the bearings are replaced. I torqued them all down once. Now I'm just going back over and making sure that they all are at 45 pounds. And this thing still spins over nice and freely. Because I tightened them down and then I spun it over like half a dozen times or so. Just to make sure everything was nice and free. Now I'm going back over it. And checking to make sure that they all are still torqued. All right. <clears throat> so like I say, spins over nice and free. Now, here is all the bearings right there. And none of them look any worse than the than the rest. I mean, they all look about the same. A little <clears throat> a little worn. But I mean, come on. This motor has had what did it have? 209,000. I mean, you can see the top coating is coming off. It's starting to get down to the second layer which means it's time to replace them. So we replaced them, which is a good thing. Now, bad thing is, is now I gotta re-clean the motor because I got oil everywhere, but not a big deal. Next thing we're gonna be ordering for this is the rear main seal and all that because, <clears throat> excuse me, because the way this is set up, this case right here that it's enclosed in has a gasket. This comes off rear main seal. So we're gonna be ordering this whole rear gasket set for this um, real shortly. Don't know when, but basically as we order parts, we'll be putting them on. This isn't a, a rush to get it done. I do wanna get it done because I wanna get it in the truck. But at the same time, I build it as I go. I'm not stressed. So we're just going to order parts, plug away at it, and eventually it'll be done. Like I said, not a big deal. All right, well, that's all we're going to do for this video because the weather is nasty outside. Hopefully it'll stop in a day or two, and then we can get outside and start working on the blazer again. All right, hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for subscribing. Catch you in the next video.